Hey, what's up, Mortgage Coach community? Today, I am sitting down with Andrew Sauce. What's up, Andrew? How you doing, Dave? Doing good, man. I'm, I'm glad to be interviewing you again. I think last time I saw you was at Sales Mastery. That's right. Yeah, and then, of course, I saw you on my call today with Mark. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was I, a great like call. That. that was a good call. You know, yeah, anybody Mark. who's listening to this, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I would say Mark's just a, a really unique individual and, and if you haven't had a chance to hear him interviewed or hear him, hear him speak uh he's somebody that i i actually had the pleasure of talking to for an hour a day uh hour a week for three years so you can imagine the depths of which those conversations tended to go and there, there pretty much wasn't one coaching call that i got off with him without having some sort of like holy holy crap moment uh usually having to do with something in my personal life and, and at the end of the call I'd be like, Oh, we should probably talk about your mortgage business. How's that going? <laughs> like, so, <laughs> right? yeah, no doubt. Well, I'll put a link down to Mark's uh, interview. We talked about realtor masterminds today. Uh, you know, you are a mortgage strategy interview. You know, one of my goals in 2018 is to help elevate loan officers from, Hey, I'm a loan officer app taker to I'm a mortgage strategist, you know, I'm a mortgage advisor, and not for that to be a label on a business card, but to mm -hmm. truly help loan officers uh, ask good questions, listen to what the family's trying to accomplish, and then use their expertise with mortgages to help the family build wealth with real estate, like it's real. And uh, so you're the 24th interview I've done like this, uh, why don't we start with just, why don't you tell people a little bit about your mortgage practice, your production, and then let's get into some big ideas and strategies. Sure. Well, I'm, uh, I'm with Benchmark Mortgage. I'm in uh, Orange County, Southern California. Uh, about 75% of my business comes here locally and still about 25% of it comes from the Bay Area because that's where I started my business uh, about nine, 10 years ago. Uh, 12 years ago now, I guess. Um, I've been saying nine or 10 years for like six years. So. Um, so that's where I started. So I've got a lot of business up there, only licensed in California. Um, in terms of production, I've since 2013 um, been in between 80 and 120 million uh, every year. Um, last year, a little bit down, I was at 88 million last year. Average loan size is about 500K. So you can do the math on units between whatever, 150 to upwards of 300 units would be my, my high water mark. Uh, I've got a team that supports me. My team has been as small as me and two people and as big as me and eight people uh, kind of depending on the latest uh, iteration of crazy idea that i have and how much money i want to spend so i'm actually on a on a uh, a little bit uh, lower end of of in terms of number of teammates i've got three people on my team right now and kind of try to keep it lean and mean here going into the this market not really knowing uh, where it's going what it's doing and, and trying to ma maintain profitability um, Mainly purchase business uh, refis simply come from past clients. I don't do a ton of of uh, marketing for refis specifically. So mainly focus on purchase. That being said, I'm I'm generally between 40. And it oscillates between 40 and 60 percent refi business simply because when the rates drop, uh, if you're in a, a high dollar amount um, market, it's pretty easy to pick up a bunch of refis from past clients. So I never get too caught up in my percentage business in terms of like purchase to re refi ratio i uh, generally just as long as i have a healthy purchase business in terms of the number of purchase transactions that are happening on a given month uh, i know that refis are going to come and go and, th and that ratio will get will get go up and down but never got too hung up on that uh, so in general pretty similar i think to to most of the listeners you know mortgage banking direct lo local uh high customer service type of model well, you're, you're killing it. I mean, that, that is volume that most originators never achieve and you've maintained that type of production through different markets and, you know, doing 88 million in 2018 profitably. Congratulations. That's, that's, that's awesome. And a couple of things that have always distinguished you, you know, in past interviews and just talking shop with you at events like mastery is that you, you're, you're just smart. You, you, you know, you, you are a mortgage strategist and, and you, you know the business really well. You use technology well. Uh, by the way, what is your tech stack? I know Mortgage Coach is part of it. Yeah. What other technology do you use? Yeah. Uh, mortgage Coach, Flowify for doc collection. It's funny you ask because uh, CRM-wise, literally, 
today is my first day in my new CRM. Um, uh, so we're using Whiteboard. We were using Be In Touch. Um, so I've, I've migrated to Whiteboard. Um, uh, what else are we using? You know, Octo Blue, Compass. Um, I think some other technology pieces. Yeah, those, those, are, yeah. those are the big ones. Those are the big ones. And it's great. You know, you've got an integration with Optimal Blue through Mortgage Coach. So that's a, for anybody listening to this call and you are on Optimal Blue and you're not using the Optimal Blue integration, uh, either connect with one of our trainers or ask your management why you don't have Optimal Blue. Uh, definitely, don't have Blue definitely, makes it, definitely makes it easier to uh, it sort of pre-populate a lot of the uh, Mortgage Coach stuff in there. So it's great. Yeah. Well, let's, do, let's make the theme of this call going from price to advice because that's something you do really well. You you take the family out of that. I do want to make sure we show a total cost analysis, and I think you're going to pull up an MI analysis. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we can go over that. Okay, so before we pull that up, let's go through what are some of the questions you ask that kind of help set up that conversation, and then let's do maybe like a little mortgage coach script. How do you describe mortgage coach? Then let close out the call with walking them through a TCA. Sure. Great. So um, one of the things that I know in some prep for this call, we talked a little bit about like this, I've been uh, on and off mortgage coach probably over the last 10 years. I think this is my third time re-signing up for it. And this is uh, it's been now um, maybe since August. So we're talking about going on six, seven months. It's probably my longest stint on it. Um, I finally stopped banging my head against the wall and thinking that I, that I could do it better or having to manually do it. And it just is, um, I sort of accepted the um, the tools that I have, and that there's a lot of other originators that are that are using this and, and that are that are fine. I used to just build these custom spreadsheets, and I think that I would do that because it would make me feel busy and important. And uh, and really, 99% of the stuff that that I was building in my custom spreadsheets can can effectively be um, displayed in Mortgage Coach, and, and quite frankly, a, a prettier and easier fashion. Um, the biggest part about what I love about it is the, um, and it's a stupid little thing, but just the fact that you know when they've looked at it and you know when to follow up. Like the, the email that you get that says, hey, this person looked at it. I mean, there's, there's, I could talk about 10 different, different types of clients and what stage they're in um, that, that will um, elicit a phone call or an email from me when I see that. So like if it's somebody you just sent it out to and then they, and then they look at it, within five minutes, okay, you, you kind of move them up a peg in like how interested they are and what you have to say. Um, if, if somebody sent it out and you never get, you never look at it, that uh, you know, kind of tells you a little bit more about, about what their indication is of, of how active they are. If you have somebody who's looking at it once a day, every single day, you know they're very driven by what the numbers are, right? They're gonna be somebody who is very picky about, about what the closing cost is. Because if they're looking at six, seven, eight, multiple times, it's not, they're not just looking for gener generic about what my payment is gonna be, about what my closing costs. They're usually going back in and looking like, okay, he said it was gonna be 51,000 cash to close and, and like, look at that. So somebody's looking at it more often, I generally think is somebody who is a little bit more numbers driven and down to the penny. Um, if you get somebody who's like in escrow, You've, you've sent them their mortgage coach for their specific numbers. We've locked in a rate and now we're seven, eight, nine days in on a 30 day close. And all of a sudden they go back and look at it again. To me, that is, for me, that's a red flag a bit because does that mean that they're all of a sudden now shopping? Are they doing something else? So like that elicits a phone call for me. So just that little piece of it, of knowing kind of that sneaky, knowing when your client's looking at that stuff and be able to call at the most opportune time as silly as it sounds, that that to me is one of the one of the nice benefits of of mortgage coach. Well, um, I love I love that you brought up that you were using spreadsheets because there's still a lot of loan officers that use their own spreadsheets. So that's I mean, that's another good theme, you know, going from price to advice, but also going from spreadsheet to an advice platform like mortgage so, coach. Because yeah. a, I I would assume by now you've used it enough that it's faster. It's oh easier. yeah, I mean it's just yeah I can plow through and I can create a TCA and like probably like a, a four option TCA for a generic deal literally in under a minute like and without using I mean a set of templates really like just doing it from scratch like it's super fast and and you can zip through that so it definitely has made it a lot easier um, it's really easy to go update those things so the other piece I know we wanted to get into kind of some of the um, one of the reasons I like 
having something like this is that it forces me to think a little bit more analytically and think a little more critically when planning somebody's mortgage. It's actually something I picked up from Keith Collins when you interviewed him. That was, that was a really good interview as well. Um, Keith Collins is up in Northern California, a friend of mine, and um, he was talking about how um, how just the fact that you know you're going to be sending this analysis tool out, you, like you you don't want to send it with just one option. And it's so easy if you're just emailing someone options when they say what's your rate, so easy to just send them an email back like, oh, we're at four and a half percent, no points, blah, 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 here you go. But when you're sending out a mortgage coach, it actually doesn't look good with only one option. It almost forces you to, to actually mortgage plan and stop being lazy and figure out ways to uh, maybe not just go apples to apples against against the bank, but but maybe figure out like, okay, here's apples to apples, but here's an orange, maybe that's good too. So it forces you to kind of strategize a little bit different and think about somebody's finances, really dig deep into what options. You'd be shocked at sometimes what options they end up going with, not because it doesn't make sense, but just because you didn't anticipate that they would want to buy the rate down by a point or whatnot. And so I think just providing, and I always shoot for three, I think three is kind of the magic number. Four sometimes gets a little bit unwieldy. I think two is okay, but I think three is kind of a perfect number of, of different options to choose where you're not overwhelming them, but um, sort of subject to depending on the, the type of client. If they're they're very numbers driven, if they're an engineer, then like I'm going to give more and more options uh, to them. Well, so, I, yeah, I love that. I love that you called out that um, interview uh, from Keith Collins. I'm going to put a link down below. You're watching this in YouTube. There'll be a link down below that interview. It was awesome. Uh, yeah. Can't remember the exact number of it, but we'll we'll put a link down below. So let's it was, let's. It was like in you know, November, I believe. So whatever that. Yeah. Was. No, I'll, I'll put a link down below and maybe while you're talking in a minute, I'll be able to pull it up and uh, get the number of it. So, by the way, it's number 15 for all of you check, looking to check it out. I did a little multitasking there. So, Andrew, let's, let's get into that TCA that we're going to go okay. through. We're going to do this mortgage strategy interview. I do want to make sure we get some scripting and some questions. Okay. So, like, before you forwarded it, and you can show it any time, what were some of the questions that you asked so that you, you know, you were a mortgage strategist? Is, is that the term you use? Mortgage strategist? Like what's the mortgage, word you use? Mortgage planner. Yeah. Mortgage kind of what planner. I go with. Okay. Yeah. So, hey, I'm a mortgage planner. What are some questions that would help set this up? And then before you actually walk us through it, what would be like your, your 30 second script that you tell the family that this is, you know, what do you what call this? That they're expecting this. Yeah. Great. So, um, uh, you know, my whole thing is in my first conversation is this particular person was actually a very cold, um, a very cold, it wasn't even a referral, it was actually a cross approval. So I know they don't do cross approvals in every market, but a cross approval is where you have a relationship with a listing agent. They send you the people who are, they require that the people who are making offers on their listings get cross approved through you. Um, I, I generally am very light. I'm not like really trying to like quote unquote steal those clients, but, um, but I definitely am sending them some options and, and my scripting around that, you know, I'm asking a lot of questions. Um, I think the, the better questions you ask, the better analysis you can put together because you can tend to get a feel for um, their level of financial sophistication um, as well as the existing lender. If they've already been talking to a lender, the, the, the depth at which they have um, been, been educated and or that they understand uh, what the different options are. Uh, frequently, lenders will only provide one option. They give you a rate you don't know anything about, especially in a, in a situation like this where it's 10% down. There's a lot of different ways that you can structure PMI these days. So um, my my conversation with him was asking a lot of questions. His scenario was really basic from a qualifying standpoint. And so I just asked, hey, um, I know you're working with Wells Fargo. Have they talked at all about, about your different options for PMI? Uh, well, at first, let's step back. Do you even know what PMI is? Yes, I know. I understand I'm not putting 20% down, so I'm going to have PMI. Well, there's a few different ways that you can pay it. Let me do this. Let me put some numbers together for you. I've got a really cool presentation software that can actually compare different options, and we can see based upon how long you plan on keeping the home, we can see uh, which option would be best over various time periods. Let me just ask you a few questions. How long do you anticipate keeping this home? And, and for him, it was, I don't remember. I put 7 and 15, so it must have been somewhere in that range. Um, so I will frequently adjust these numbers on the short term and the long term based upon their answers around that. So they know that this analysis is custom specific to them. Um, and so then I let them know that there's a nice, a pretty cool piece of mortgage software that I use that will compare up to four different options. I'm going to put some numbers together for you and then I'm going to give you a call back and walk you through it. Would that be okay? Of course. So I, I 
give them a call. I'm sorry, I put the numbers together, I send it out to them, and and I and I hop on, I do a live or an edge live so that they can you know see this stuff walking around on here um, and you know see me walking walking through it and I just you know literally go through the different options of you know in this case I had monthly PMI uh, LPMI basically or or PMI uh, single premium bought out up front and you know I, it's very easy to go and highlight here's the differences in rates this one is paid for by a, a up front so, so time out. Cost. Yeah. Time out. I want to make sure everybody's connecting the dots. Like while he's clicking on this and it's showing a yellow highlight, that's a feature. So if you're new to Mortgage Coach, not only will you get an alert so you could be, you know, speed to lead, and you can, as Andrew said, know where the buyer is at or where the prospect is at, but you can also have this interactive. And so if you're using a spreadsheet, it's not mobile optimized the way Mortgage Coach, it's not shareable you can't highlight so it's infinitely better than a spreadsheet so i mean my theme for this whole interview is you know you went from spreadsheets to mortgage coach which helps you deliver advice more effectively really the and, advice hasn't changed for me it's just the, the presentation of it and my ability right. to and, and and like every single time i do an edge live people are like oh that's pretty cool like and so just as i'm a visual explainer um more than anything. So uh, a lot of people are visual learners. I'm a visual explainer. I can't explain something without having a pad of paper and writing it down and like showing you graphically what it what I'm trying to say. So this really works well for me because as I'm talking, I could I could say something like, as you can see, in the monthly PMI, this this rate is lower. Uh, but if you click over here, you can see that it has monthly mortgage insurance versus the rate is a little bit higher over here on this the second paid option because it's PMI built into the interest rate, you can see that there's no more than insurance. So as you can see, you know, just go walk them through that conversation. Everybody probably had a million times, but visually it makes it a lot more appealing. You can like literally customize it. And while I'm on the fly, what I really like about this is they can like say, well, what would it look like if I did whatever, if I paid a point, okay, hold on, let me hop back in. And I literally hop back into the mortgage coach jimmy up an analysis i say okay hit refresh boom there's your there's your paying one point up front um you know or 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 in this case they already were in uh, had an offer price you but what if they were in pre-approval stage we're going through this and they say well what would it look like if i went up to instead of 375,000? What, what would it if they countered me back at 400,000? what's that going to look like give me two seconds go back into the analysis literally i think it's here go back in there and and change it and say, okay, hit refresh on your, on your screen. Boom. Now it's 400. Um, so it's, it's really great to be able to have this built and go through it like that. And so they can really get all of their questions answered and, and it really, really works well for the people who are analytical, but even for the people who are, who are not super analytical, um, it's been great. Yeah. So guys think about that. And those edits can be done from a mobile device. They can be done from your desktop. Do you ever, um, click on the more information one more time. Do you ever um, show prepayment, you know, where there's that reinvestment tab? Do you ever? Yeah, I, I, I do. I like those. I, I was actually trying to find one before we went on here. I, I don't use it a ton, but um, but when you do, it actually, I've gotten a few refis out of that specifically. And, and that mainly is countering the a whole, um, I don't want to start my loan over. So even though you've got a 5% and I get you four and a half, it's not going to cost you anything. You know, they start looking at, that's why sometimes they look at total cost and they see, well, why is the total cost actually higher, even though the rate's lower? And you know, you have to do that explaining around, well, you're, you're, it's a 30-year loan, so portions of the savings are coming from the, the increased term, and a portion of the savings are coming from the increased rate. So let's do this. Let's just say you keep making the exact same payment you're making now, um, and then you just apply it towards this lower rate. Here's what it will do. And so I, um, yeah, I frequently will, will compare like, um, I'll, I'll do like a current, and then I'll do like a. a uh, taking the monthly savings and then I'll, I'll put a reinvesting the monthly savings and show them exactly what that does and, and, and put so, it back in there. So guys, if you want to be a referral based local mortgage expert, this is, you know, this is, this is what the new norm is. You know, when you look at this total cost analysis, think of it as personally branded uh, advice and mortgage coach is a platform. So you could deliver a personally branded advice experience and you could also show realtors. You know, I would imagine, Andrew, that sometimes, you know, you showing this to an agent 
elevates how they see you and the professionalism. But by the way, before you answer that, feel free to tell yeah. us what we're looking at here. Oh yeah, sorry. So I just want to pull up one that I just remembered. I just literally just did this I think, two days ago. Um, this is a, a purchase and she wanted to, you know, she kept mentioning, like she, we always said she was going to do 300K down. She was buying an investment property and she kept mentioning the fact that, man, she'd really like to do, to do less down, down payment, but she feels like she has to do this. So I said, well, what if we did instead of, instead of 300 down, which is about 30 something percent, um, 35%, what if we just did 25% down and took that $112,000 difference and reinvested it? And I just, uh, let's see if it's in here somewhere. Uh, uh, I don't know where it is. Anyway, let's, I had it in here. I probably did it on a different, on different spreadsheet, but, uh, but if it, it, it was, her net worth was significantly higher just doing the 25% down and reinvesting at a, at a, even like a 5%, um, reinvestment rate. So yeah, so it's uh, pretty neat. So let's do this. Go back to the other one. Uh, yeah. and go to the top. So one, if you could forward me, go, go to the other spreadsheet, the one that you started oh, yeah. with. Yep. So, so if you could forward me the link to that, to the one you're trying to show, because mm -hmm. my goal here is to give you guys a, um, a course so you can learn how to create these scenarios. He's going to share that with me right now, by the way, that's how easy it is for y'all to share it with your customers. Just go through mortgage coach. And if you're watching this in YouTube, there'll be a link down below to both of the scenarios that we've talked about. So you can learn from it. I want, I want to make note that it's got his company brand, you know, on the right, it's got his personal brand on the left. If you could click on that menu real quick at the top, one of the menu. Yep. Right there. You could translate this in Spanish. A family could print it. They could share it with other family members. You could change the view. You know, this is a dynamic, advice based experience. So, so let's do this. This has been an awesome call. I want to share a couple things on my stream and then I want to wrap this up because I like to keep these as close to 20 minutes as possible. So if you could confirm when you can see my screen, Andrew, yep. uh, boom and boom. So, so like I said, personally advice based experience, this is a mortgage strategy interview. This particular one is number 23. So if you wanna check out more interviews, like the one we're talking about right here, just go to our YouTube channel and go to the Mortgage Strategies playlist and you'll see this is number 23. When you're watching this, who knows, I'm sure there'll be more. Uh, but by the time this year is over, I'm gonna have 50 or more of these interviews. So one of the things that our, our um, success manager team has done is they've created this page on our website called mortgage strategies, mortgage coach strategies. And within this, we're taking some of the best interviews that I've done, some of the best examples from a teaching perspective. And, and think of this as like an obstacle course where I want to learn how to do purchase options with mortgage coach. I want to learn how to do rent versus own jumbo down payment. Andrew, this is going to be an MI analysis. And we're showcasing what we think are some of the most best teachable experiences where not only does it have the interview with a loan officer, it's also got links to the TCA. And if we think there's some scripts to pull out of it, we're putting it here. So I just want to make sure you guys are familiar with this resource. Also, anybody watching this, hopefully you're part of our mortgage coach productivity mastermind. My ask to that is, you know, participate, you know, study it, make comments, ask questions. Uh, great place to engage. Andrew, do you um, watch many of our YouTube videos or how active are you in the community? Yeah, so I'm not super active in terms of um, commenting and, and posing questions stuff in the community, but um, the, the more, these interviews that you do is, is my primary source of, uh, call it real life continuing education. Um, and, uh, you know, outside of like sales mastery and some coaching and stuff that I do, like in terms of you got a free 15, 20 minutes at night that you want to get better at your craft. If you did watch one of those videos a night for, for a month, you would be way ahead of the game. And uh, I think it's some of the best content that's out there right now. I think I, uh, I interviewed you for my podcast. And I think I said the same thing on that. And that's, um, I, I really commend you for, for giving and, and coming from a place of uh, contribution and, uh, and, and not always from a place of just sales. 
um, it, what you're what you're doing for our community is really powerful. Yeah, I appreciate that. Andrew. And give yourself a plug for your uh, podcast. So anybody that wants to follow it, I mean, I I thought yeah. you crushed. I oh, appreciate it. Thank you. It's, uh, it's called Loan Officer Strategy Sessions. It's just uh, I, I interview loan officers very similar to, to what you're doing here about just things that are going on in the mortgage world and uh, and, and ways that they're succeeding. Yeah, well, I, I liked it. The way you interviewed me, I thought it was a great conversation. Highly recommend loan officers. Check it out. So if you got value from this conversation with Andrew, give us a like. Like it on YouTube. Like it on Facebook. Share it with your mortgage friends. Andrew, any last advice you have? You know, I mean, you're a top producer. You're a leader in this industry. Any last advice you have for loan officers that are watching this? My best advice for, for every loan officer, anybody in sales, is pick up your phone and tell the truth. Love it. Love it. Pick up your phone, tell the truth. And when it comes to delivering options, do it with a total cost analysis. Take care, everybody. And Andrew, appreciate you, brother.